Okay, welcome to Let's Build It on Drupal 8. My name is Montaña Franco. I'm from Spain, but I'm living now in Belgium with all the jihadists and all the horrible stuff. I work for a company called Everest, but I'm placed in the European Commission. I'm a member and helping in the Spanish Association and in the Drupal Association too. I recommend it, uh, you to do it. It's really nice to help. And let's talk a little bit about Drupal 8. First of all, I uh, would like to say that this is a, a beginner session. We are going to take a look at Drupal, uh, at the administration part of Drupal, how to create content types, blogs, views, and all this stuff. So I'm sorry, but if you are expecting another session about PHP, it's not happening now. So uh, Drupal 8 is removing barriers to allow the con uh, site builders to do what they really do great, which is build. So we have uh, two different worlds, the backend, frontend, and the site building. Now it's going to be easier for us. Yeah, sure, sorry. I was telling that Drupal 8 is removing uh, barriers to allow con uh, Drupal site builders to do what they do great, which is build, okay? How? With some customization options, with powerful custom blocks and views, with the integration of accessibility standards, easy configuration management, and more things that we will take a look now. So what we are going to review during this session, we will see the responsive interface of Drupal by default. We will take a look at the block layouts, the new common types, the content types, how is now working this on Drupal 8. We will take a look how is to see the public face of a content. We will check how is working multilingual, the configuration management, the views, the content forms, and the whatever you want. I'm oh, sorry. I will go for a demo now. So. I have here a Drupalite installation. I did it a couple of hours ago, so it's really fresh. So first of all, what we are saying here is this amazing admin toolbar, okay? Look at this. It's really awesome. You can move it wherever you want. You can also hide it. And it's fully responsive. So if I try to do this, which is not easy on my computer, sorry, you will see that it's fully responsive. It's really nice. Actually, if we go to the content page, for example, we have this page also fully responsive. This, this was working really nice on Drupal 7, but the tables are not uh, fully responsive on Drupal 7. Now in Drupal 8, we have this functionality. Even for the comments, you see it's fully responsive. Let's take a look at the blocks. Uh, the block layout page is, as usual, in a structure, but we have some improvements here. So for example, this is the new admin page of a block. As you can see, we have here all the layouts that you can find on the theming. We have a new uh, custom block library page. So here, you can create your custom blocks. If you are creating custom block, even if you are uh, creating a view block, these kind of blocks coming from a view will appear here too. Okay, so for example, let's create a block with some test. And let's go to the layout. So actually, to place a block, the only thing that you have to do is click on place a block. Now we have this amazing search uh, functionality that we didn't have in Drupal 7. If you remember, it was a nightmare to 
look for a, for a custom block. So now just clicking on welcome, I can place the block in the header. Now we can edit also the matching name. So for the for the front end, it's a really improvement. It's a really huge improvement. Sorry, we can change the matching name here. We can also uh, choose if we want to display the title or not. No no more non tags on on the creating custom blocks. And these uh, these tabs are as usual the same. So we can create this block. It will be placed here in the header, you see. And now I will show you an amazing stuff about Drupal 8. Now you can add one block more than once. So if I go, for example, to the footer, and I try to look for my block, it's here, and I can place it again. Even for the block views, or for whatever you are doing, even for the content types, for every entity, you can place it in every place more than once. So, yeah, let's place this here in the footer. Click on Save. And check if my blocks are there twice. So here we have one block without the title. Yeah. Sorry? Ah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So we have here one block in the header without the title, and we have here the other block, which is the same. OK. Thank you. Now, most of the things in Drupal 8 are entities. So for example, we have a new entity, which is the, content ty the comment types. We have, as usual, the content types. We have also contact forms. Views are now considered as an entity, blocks, etc. So let's check how it's working the comment types. Now, you will be able to create your own comment type and place or relate it, uh, this comment type with your content type. If you remember, on Drupal 7, you only have the default comment. So now you will be able to create your own comment type with the fields that you want and place this comment type in the pages that you want, even the nodes, as a real entity, entity relation or whatever. So what we can do is create a comment type. I will place uh, later this comment type in the article content type. So I will just put comment article. The target entity is to say, uh, where do you want to link this comment type? Just because I'm linking to a content, I will click here. This is really nice because you can actually add your own fields. One of the biggest improvements of Drupal 8 is that now we have a lot of uh, modules in the in the core that we usually uh, used to uh, install for Drupal 7. So for example, links, email, date. These kind of things is obviously you, you usually install, install the first time that you are creating a site, you install these modules in Drupal 7. The second time you will install it again. Also, the views, a lot of modules are now part of the core. So, uh, this is the content type, the comment type, sorry. We can add, for example, an email. Yeah? Hi, sorry. can see now well it's the same okay and for this side okay sorry I didn't know this <laughs> so let's create a new field for the comment type Q1 
one email per command. Okay, perfect. One of the biggest things now on Drupal 8 is that you can manage the form display and also the view display of, of your entity. So if you remember on Drupal 7, you usually change the order of the fields in the content type. Now you don't have to do it. You can do it here. So just organizing this, you will be able to change the form of your, of your in that case, common type. Also, you can hide stuff if you don't want to show it. In Drupal 7, you have to do some custom stuff to hide this kind of fields. Now you can do it using the admin interface. So let's put, for example, the email here. And now let's go in to take a look at the article type. So common types are really um, the same, and it's nothing is changing here. So here is the article type. I will add the comment type. So obviously I will choose a comment. And I will put here, for example, And here, you can see the types of comments that you have. So I will choose that one that I re already created. Here, you will be able to choose um, uh, the configuration of your comment. So now, if I'm going to create an article, I'm sorry, but I don't have too much creativity to fill this information. This is really nice. You can um, insert pictures in your body. The alternative test is now mandatory. You can also align it, and you can also uh, put a caption in the bottom of the picture or not. So here, I have my caption. Everything is OK. Let's click on Save. And here is our article. And here is our comment. You see email, subject, or whatever. This comment is what is by default for on the article, OK? I forgot to, to remove it. One of the biggest improvements on Drupal 8 is that now if you are adding a picture, an image in your body, it's fully responsive by default. Oh, so if I click here and I try to put this smaller, well, now it's not working. Sorry things of the demo. It's too big, the picture. So just because it's too big, we can change it using the amazing quick edit. It, sorry, in? Present. Yeah, ac yeah it, actually, it's it's in in the in the theming it's great in the css is in in a hundred in whatever percent but i think that this one is not working because it's too big actually i think that is a wallpaper where i download it anyway let's change for another picture and see if it's working so using the quick edit which is really nice we can change the title but we can change also the body WYSIWYG is now on core, so you will be able to change uh, whatever is in the body. And the WYSIWYG is, is here, is appearing here. So let's remove this picture and try to select another one, maybe that one. It looks like it's a smaller. I will click on Save and let's check if it's working the responsive. 
If not, we can open uh, a ticket on the issue queue if you want. It's not quirky. I don't know why, but I'm going to show you another example because I already tested before this and it was working. So it looks like it's working for the basic pages, but not for the articles. So trust me, I'm not lying. <laughs> Some features, not all, are fully responsive. OK. All the modules now are in the extend page. So they change the, the name. Finally, we have here a search stuff, so we will be able to look for modules that are part of the core or whatever that we install it, even if it's custom. Yeah. Hmm. Good question. I didn't try it, but we can tr we can take a look later on. So uh, modules, these are all the modules that are part of the core now. They are divided on these types. So now, as I told you, for the file types, we have all this information available by default. And on the core, we have a lot of modules that uh, we had on Drupal 7. Some modules are, uh, have changed a little bit, the name or whatever. We have, for example, contact, which is the, the old web form by default in, the pla in, in Drupal. This is the list. We have views, the tours, which is new and it's really cool. For multilingual, uh, we have now four modules. It's not, uh, they are not enabled by default. I just enable and create a, a, a language. You can check here the configuration. And we are going to take a look at the multilingual. So now here, this is not changing. It's uh, what we have, uh, we usually have on Drupal 7. If you go to the language and try to enable one language, I will not do it because it's taking a lot of time. But if you, for example, go to wherever, Catalan, for example, and add the language, is importing by default all the translations. So you, will, you don't have to import all the translation after creating a new, a new language. What you will have to do is update this translation if somebody is contributing with the translation of this language. So once we have this, if we go to the content type, for example, the article, you will have here translate content type. If you click on edit, you will be able to uh, translate all the labels once in the same page, I mean. What else? Oh, the configuration management. Sorry, but I, I have here all the topics that I want to talk about, just to be sure that I'm not forgetting everything. So let's talk a little bit about the configuration management. First of all, I want to say that I have here a Drupal 8 copy. So my idea is to move some stuff from my Drupal 8 to my Drupal 8 copy. So if you go to configuration, you have here an amazing configuration synchronization. So here, you can import or export your own configuration of your Drupal to another Drupal. You can do fully, I mean, move all the configuration at the same time and you can just click on single item and define what you want to move. Maybe it's some fields, maybe it's some content types, maybe it's a view. 
maybe it's information about the, sim the system, we are going to move everything. Actually, yeah, with the configuration management, you will be able to move all. And when I say all is content type, views, blocks, comment types, all the entities. And also all the administration configuration that you are doing, like change the site name, I don't know, create new, new roles with the permissions, everything, okay? I think that this is going to take a little bit. So this is my, my field of configuration. Just import it here. As I told you, this is a copy. I will go to the same page and click in import. Hmm. So as you can see, it's that one. Once you are importing the configuration, uh, you will receive a several page with all the things that are new and all the things that are different. So for example, here we can check what, we, what it's changed from one Drupal to another. And we will be able, for example, to check the difference. So if I click here, this is really intuitive. Uh, it's saying me, your current site name is Drupal 8 copy and it will be Drupal 8 for example, mm, core extension. This is information about what is happening. So actually, as you see in the other website, I have Spanish and all the modules about the multilingual enable it. And here is importing this configuration. And for the new staff, you have here my common type, stuff about the Spanish language that I put. So let's click. You have to go to the bottom of the page. Don't forget to do that, because if not, it's not working. And you can import all. OK, don't panic. <laughs> So what is happening here? Now Drupal 8, when you install a Drupal 8 for the first time, uh, you have like a kind of ID. So this configuration management is working for Drupal 8 that has the same ID. So once you install the first time a Drupal 8, you have to crea create instance of this Drupal 8 to move this configuration management. This is done because it's easier to do this when you are working in your local, moving things to a staging, from a staging to production or playground or whatever. Actually, it's really easy to change this ID with Rust. But the thing is that it's really easy to, ins to install instance of the same Drupal 8. If you are not doing that, uh, you will not be able to move the configuration from one site to another. The configuration interface will say, no, you cannot do that because I'm not the same Drupal 8 as the other one. OK. If you are working with different Drupal 8 ID, you have to do these kind of things using feature or the typical stuff that you use for Drupal 7. Any questions on that? Feel free to interrupt me and ask questions. I prefer to do something dynamic. Well, just because this is taking a lot of time, let's check the views. So views are now placed in the structure, as usual, are now part of the core. And basically, everything is using views now. So for example, the front page is using views. It's enabled by default. Actually, um, it doesn't matter if the views are in the core because you will be able to change these views uh, using the administration uh, interface. 
So you don't have to hard code any module or do customization, do code for change these views. So it's a really typical example to go to the people view and change some stuff. So for example, if I click on people, this is really similar to Drupal 7. Let's remove, for example, the role. So if we edit the people view from the admin part, I didn't check this. I never create a view on Drupal 8 with another view attached, but we can do it if you want. I mean, this is a demo. The thing is that we can play with a Drupal 8. So let's remove this, um, this filter criteria. I will finish the topic that I have, and then we can play with Drupal 8 if you want. So just removing this, clicking on save. Synchronization is working. OK. So as you can see, no more role filter anyway. Let's check the synchronization. So the importation was uh, working. It's successfully working pretty well. And if we go to the site, we have, for example, this. We can check if we have the block. We can check if we have the comment types. Hmm, the block is not here. Maybe we should open a, a ticket. But the, the comment type is here. I don't know why I, the blog is not here. Sorry for that. But actually, the message was saying it was really fine. So Another thing that I forgot to tell you about the configuration management is that it's, um, these files are part of, the, of your Drupal administration. You will be able to put this in the repository, synchronize with other people, so it's really easy to manage. Uh, the configuration management between, for example, a team of uh, some developers. Uh, let's check the contact form, and then we can play with Drupal. The only thing that I would like to say about the contact form is that as uh, we have the same stuff that for the comment types, you will be able to create your own contact forms as usual, but you will be able to manage fields and add whatever you want. So as usual, you have here all the information, entity reference. You can put views, whatever you want. And you will be able also to change uh, the, the manage, uh, to manage the form display and the view mode. So your question was, if we can put, if we can create some permissions for the comments. OK. was the name? It was article or something like that. Not that one. This is the content type. Path, shortcuts. So it looks like you cannot. 
Sorry. You can propose the functionality if you want. Your question was about how to include a view as attachment of other view. OK, let's check. Mm. Let's enable that one, which is the typical article view order by date, I guess. So here in the header we can add render block, comment, custom block. So for example, if I have, if I create a view block from another, uh, I mean, I create another view and a view block, I guess that we will be able to have it here in the custom block render identity. I don't know if I said this before, but uh, you will be able to trade include views as an entity reference in a content type. And the same for the blocks. Yeah, I told about it. Mm. But I think that this is not working. View area. Insert a view inside an area. So it looks like you can do it. In the header, in the footer, I guess. I didn't check. And I guess that you will be able to do it here also, adding whatever, changing the content from another kind of things. But actually, can you put an example? Because maybe this is something that is much uh, easier to do it using a content type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another question about to play with Drupal 8? Yeah? This? Okay. You don't want to use the login, what do you mean? Do you want the public uh, to have the home page? Slash user, okay. So to remove this, uh, Okay, it's, it's here. If I click on log out, this is my public page. What? It's by default. I didn't touch anything. This is a view. It's the front end view, which is part of the core now. And it's showing you uh, some articles that are promoted in the home page. Okay? By default, you have the typical stuff on Drupal a, um, that in Drupal 7, the search. You can disable it. We can take a look. The login button. If I 
if I click on login as an admin, I will have what I was uh, showing you. To remove this, you can do Ah, you want to remove the bottom. You only I'm sorry, I'm not getting uh, but I think that you want something more. This is a block. You can remove whatever you want. This is blocks, too. You can remove them. So you can go here, block layout, and you have here all the blocks. Help page, blah, blah, blah. So for example, to remove that one, just click in none. I click here, none, save. <laughs> Probably clear cache. Mm Well, actually, no clear cache. It was working anyway. So the, actually, you can also click here and configure your block, not to go into the block page. No, the quick edit is only on, on but in Drupal 7, you have like a like the typical tool icon, configuration icon. So if you click here, you will display this. The pencil is only on Drupal. So here, for example, is the same. I click in None, Save, Block, and it's disappearing of my, from my home page. Any other questions? Yeah? B views? B view you? I, yes. It's, it's in the, I, I thought I saw you, but let's take a look. It's, uh, it's on the core. Both, both modules are on the core. And both are enabled by default. Any other question? Come on, I have a Drupal A to play with. Don't be shy. <laughs> OK. Um, so we can resume this as saying that Drupal 8 is awesome. <laughs> Here uh, you can find some resources. The first one is about uh, how it's working the site building on Drupal 8. Uh, oh, I think that I have. Well, the first one is for Drupal 8 site builders. The second one is how to start with the administration on Drupal 8. And the third one is some best practice about how to site building and the configuration management and these kind of things. If you want to learn more about Drupal 8 uh, as a site builder, I think that it could be great if you can go to these sessions. So today we have the state of the country modules in Drupal 8. I'm pretty sure that it's information that you need to know. 
Um, you will be able also to attend to the entities in Drupal 8. And tomorrow we have the Migrate API, the configuration management on Drupal 8. Uh, they will talk about uh, the same stuff that I did, changing the configuration, but in a more detailed uh, stuff. And you can also attend to everything multilingual in Drupal 8. So if you don't, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, multilingual in Drupal 8 is using entity translation. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can you can go on yeah. You can go on two different ways. You can use it uh, the Drupal admin interface, just installing the module. Uh, you will need some configuration on your hosting or environment or local host to enable the FTP importation, or you can just do it by Drush. Drush. Drush is a way of uh, manage your Drupal using commands. So for example, this is saying, please, Drupal 8, clear your cache. If you want to enable a module on Drupal 8, you can click, uh, you can just type drash n and the module that you want, the, the machine, well, not the machine name, but in the case of the slide, I guess that is a slide show or whatever, click on enter and this uh, command will download for you the module and will enable for you the module. If you want to do it using Drupal admin interface, you can just go here, extend, oh, I have it here open, install a new module, put here the, so if I go to Where? It's in Drupal.org. You have here all the modules, all the themes, all the core versions, the ECQ, everything, it's on Drupal.org. You have a lot of documentation there. Maybe the Wi-Fi is not working now. Well, actually, on Drupal.org uh, is everything. I think that if you are starting with Drupal, you can check the links that I put to start working. Uh, indeed, these links, you can find uh, information about how to install your first Drupal, uh, about the admin interface, how to manage your content. It's really helpful. Sorry, but Drupal.org is not working really well. But anyway, you can put here the the link of the of the um, tar GC that it's on Drupal.org. Click on install and if you have your environment well configured for that, it will install the module. Any other questions? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's not web form. Now the name of the module is contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you will be able to create your own forms, but you have by default two, one for the feedback on your site and another one for the contact. So the contact form is already by default. You can use it. And if you want more web forms, you will be able to create them and add the fields that you want. Anybody else? I'm sorry, but it's not working internet and I have this presentation on uh, Google Drive. Thank you for being here. If you have some questions, just pin me on IRC or on Twitter or just I will be the whole weekend here. So thank you very much.